guys, it's Erin. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about how you might start reading old books if it's not a thing that you're really familiar with. The, the kind of obvious answer to how do I start reading old books is to pick up an old book and read it. <laughs> but that um, is not necessarily something that works for everybody, especially if you really just haven't read classics a lot or at all, if you kind of like skipped that part of English class in high school or you're in high school and you're just like struggling to get how to read old books. I love reading classics. I think they're immensely rewarding, but they are a challenge level up from like YA and genre fiction and even literary fiction sometimes. And that is not for any particular reason, except that they are old books. So I'll share some tips and tricks with you um, to help you just maybe start in a place that you can set yourself up for success. That's my goal. Before I get started, if you hear a lot of background noise, I live next to my community's pool, which is great because like have a nice view out my window but it's Memorial Day and there are people hanging out and music playing and stuff and it's not super loud or like obnoxious to me um, but it might pick up so that's what's happening so I have eight or ten tips and I will include a couple of book recommendations but as you'll see in one of my tips they might not work for you so do your homework so the first thing to do is to start small a lot of the classics that people really rave about um, are really long and <laughs> that is not always the best way to start. And that's because the, as I will talk about a lot um, over this video, the, the pacing and the way that stories were written 100 or 200 or 500 years ago is different from the way that stories are written now. And so getting used to that um, in a 700 page novel can be kind of uh, challenging sometimes. So pick something short. Under 200 pages, they are possible. Some short classics that I really like. The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. This is, uh, the main narrative about this is about a woman who uh, marries a man she knows is not maybe like the most morally upright um, because she has starry-eyed um, visions of, you know, saving him. And it turns out that he is a really like horrible human being and also uh, an alcoholic and she has to kind of like deal with the repercussions of her choices. Uh, I found it really really thoughtful. Another one, I'm not gonna go get it, uh, would be something like The Great Gatsby which is really short um, and that kind of brings me to my next point which is start recent. Unless you're just dying to read a particular classic in which case go for it, um, ignore all of my rules, read that book. Start with something more recent. Uh, classics that were written in the like 1900 to 1950 range are going to be for one often they're a lot shorter than like the stuff that was written in the 1800s and two they tend to be easier to read because the language and the kind of just like social world they're set in is more familiar to us. You can find lots of lists of books um, you know from certain time periods on Goodreads or on Wikipedia so uh, as with all of these recommendations you know, like I can give you a couple of books, but the your best bet is if you're like, okay, yes, I want to start with a short, recent classic, then, you know, look for classics that were written in between 1900 and 1950 or so and, you know, check the page count and just pick the one that sounds the most interesting to you, which is my next point. Pick something interesting. Uh, certain classics, there's a handful of them. I'm thinking specifically of Jane Austen. They get a lot of kind of airtime. And I personally love Jane Austen. I own all of her books, sometimes in multiple copies. I reread them um, regularly. I have taught about half of them. And I just, I think they're wonderful books. But if you're not the kind of person that likes sort of social comedies or the kind of rom-com thing that's going on, you're not gonna like these. If you like fantasy, if you like mysteries, if you're just like not into romance, you probably aren't gonna like Jane Austen and it's maybe not the place to start. So definitely read the plot summary and see, uh, is that a book that actually sounds interesting or are you just reading it because everybody else has? 
Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that either. Sometimes that encourages us to get out of our comfort zone and you might be somebody who finds that you don't usually like romance but you really love Jane Austen because she has so much more to say than to just write a romance. But again, if you don't love romance, maybe don't start there. So some recommendations. If you really like mysteries and or page turners, try Wilkie Collins. He is um, one of the earliest writers of detective stories. If you like paranormal or fantasy, try something like Frankenstein or Dracula, um, which Warning with Dracula, the first um, section of that is kind of slow paced. Just like keep going because it gets really good. What else can I recommend? If you like stories that are more just about like people and social commentary and maybe some humor, um, try Charles Dickens. I find actually that um, minus the magic, there's a lot of Dickens's style in J.K. Rowling's writing. So if you really like Harry Potter for the like, just like the people and the really interesting characters and not so much the magic, um, try Dickens. He's pretty great. Something like David Copperfield or Great Expectations are good places to start. The next thing, read a summary or watch the movie. This can be like uh, shocking in book world, but I find it actually really helpful to know where the story is going. This is something that I did uh, especially a lot when I was a lot younger and just getting into reading classics and familiarizing myself with the way that the language worked, and the way that the world worked, um, because it is different. People wrote differently and even though they're writing in the same language, their sentence structure is different, their vocabulary is different, the pacing of the story is different, and you can feel kind of lost and like you don't really know what's going on. So if you have a summary of like what is actually happening, that actually helps a lot. So I did this when I first read Jane Austen's work, and her work is more than 200 years old at this point, and so you know that's like, that's actually a long time in the history of, of books. I found kind of by accident that the books that I had read, the usually the, that I had seen the film of, I followed more easily than the ones that I had gone into cold, just because there are so many characters and there's just so much going on. So that's definitely like a thing to try, um, especially because if you watch, you know, one of the like movies, so much gets left out. So that's what like hooked me into wanting to read Emma. I really, really liked the movie, but one of the characters that I liked a lot, Jane Fairfax, doesn't get a lot of air time. And I wanted to know if there was more about her in the book, and there was a lot more, and it made me like her even more. So if you're just reading to know what happens, that might not work for you. But um, even knowing kind of the setup of the story with a more detailed like plot synopsis can be helpful. The next thing is, expect it to take a little bit longer than usual. Um, my like Wilkie Collins binge read notwithstanding, the older a book is, the longer it takes me to read it. Uh, just because, again, the language is a little different, the syntax is a little different, sometimes you just have to pay more attention than you might in a, like, a genre fiction book, like a thriller or something, if that's what you're used to reading. And so it just takes me a little bit longer. Uh, oftentimes what I'll do, especially if I'm reading a long classic, is I'll have that classic and then I'll read other stuff around it. So I'll try to read, you know, 30 or 40 or 50 pages in a day and then I'll put it down, I'll read something else in between uh, and that really helps me uh, sort of give the story the attention that it wants without feeling like it's taking over my reading life. Something else that will really help you, especially when you're just getting started with reading classics, is finding a good edition. Not a pretty edition necessarily, but a good one. So a lot of the really beautiful editions out there are just the book. And that's really cool if you want to put it on your shelf. And I have lots of those editions. I like them a lot. But when you're just starting, especially with reading classics, it can be challenging uh, for a number of reasons. One of the other things that makes reading classics kind of challenging is they are just set in a world that is unfamiliar to us. Um, it's like kind of like picking up a fantasy where the author expects you to know what the fantasy world is like already. Usually when somebody, you know, does world building, they, they do it in such a way to explain things to you because they recognize that you haven't ever been to the fantasy world before. But Jane Austen, her original audience, lived in her world, but we don't. And it's a really different world. Um, the expectations, the gender norms, the way money worked, 
like all of these things are really different and so stuff that she didn't feel like she needed to explain to her original audience can be really confusing and sometimes it matters a lot to the plot what that is like Bleak House is all about the courts of chancery which made a lot of sense to Dickens's original audience <laughs> It's like we have no idea what that is like. So having an edition with an introduction that is written by a scholar who kind of like recognizes that they'll address, they'll talk, they'll tell you briefly what the courts of chancery were and why Dickens is making fun of them. They have footnotes in the back or at the bottom of the page that will explain what a barouche is. It's a carriage, by the way, um, or you know why. Uh, Henry Tilney is making jokes about muslin dresses to Catherine Moreland in uh, Northanger Abbey. Just like things like that that you you just don't know and you miss because it's not part of the culture anymore. Those are really 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 invaluable. So use them, read the introduction, sometimes it's spoilery, sometimes the notes are spoilery too, so just like heads up. That can be kind of annoying sometimes, but it, it makes a difference. Um, the Oxford Wolves Classics, of which I have many are really excellent for that. Also, those can be a little bit more challenging to find in the US. The Penguin Classics are everywhere and um, while they're getting more expensive, you can usually find them used pretty easily. Get a good edition, use the notes. I put like a sticky tab in to hold my place in the notes as I'm reading and at this point, like I don't look at every single note because sometimes I just feel like I understand what's going on because over time you kind of like start to figure stuff out and it matters less. Oh, having notes matters less, I mean, but especially when you're getting started, it can be really, really helpful. It changes the reading experience a little bit because you have to stay, you can't like fall into the book. And so of course, like feel free to just ignore the existence of the notes, but having them if you need them is really really useful. Another thing to try is uh, to get an audiobook or an ebook. You'll lose the notes on the audiobook especially um, and sometimes on the ebook too but this is an inexpensive way to just like have the book right there in the case of the ebook and if you get both um, oftentimes they're really inexpensive because they're classics. You can switch between the two, which uh, I have done and found quite helpful, especially for the really long classics. One of the advantages of hearing the book read out loud is that a lot of books were written in this period with the understanding that they would be written read out loud because that's how a lot of people engaged with their books. They would read them out loud. Um, not always, but often. And so they were written to, to be heard. And it can be helpful to to hear and see the words on the page, especially again if you're unfamiliar with that kind of writing. My next tip is kind of like two in one. Um, the first one is if you don't like the book, DNF it. It's fine. Nobody's gonna hate you. Some people may hate you. Uh, people have weird feelings about classics. Recognize that sometimes that means not right now. I have DNF books and come back to them even years later and recognized that because I have changed and my capability of understanding what it is the author is doing has changed, I like the book now. Case in point is Huckleberry Finn. I read it in high school and like whatever, I didn't really care about it. I actually, I kind of remember like genuinely disliking it. So I don't know what that was. Um, and just like finding it difficult and confusing and I wasn't sure what was going on and it just like wasn't great. And I actually kind of avoided it. Um, when I started teaching, I switched it out for something else in the curriculum because I was like, I don't, I don't want to deal with this book. I don't like it. And then I had to read it for something. And I was like, oh, what was I thinking? Um, just the extra, you know, five or six or actually it's probably closer to 10 years of experience that I had reading classics and understanding um, the world that Mark Twain was writing about uh, made a really big difference for me. So reading the classics is definitely a journey and it is something that, you know, you can kind of like get into and things that are challenging at the beginning won't be challenging down the road, just like with any kind of reading. So if you don't like the book, stop. Don't write it off forever, but definitely like, who cares? Um, but also know when to stop. Uh, something that I've noticed, especially with longer classics, is the story takes a while to get going. And some of the books that I have really loved, like The Tenant of Wildfell Hall that I mentioned earlier, or even The Woman in White, which I also mentioned earlier, some of uh, Dickens's books, 
they've taken me quite a while to get into and so for the first couple of days that I'm reading the book I might read like 15 or 20 pages and then go do something else and this is where it can be helpful to have another book going on at the same time like I was interested in I didn't dislike it but I was only kind of like halfway interested in it but I was interested enough to want to keep reading sort of actually with the tenant of wild hill hall I put that one down for months um, and then I picked it back up and like started at the beginning so give it like I know a lot of people will DNF after 50 pages. Give it 100 or even 150 pages. The Woman in White, I was interested in enough to keep reading, but I didn't start to really get hooked until like page 300 out of 645 pages or something. I'm like halfway through the book before I'm really, really deeply hooked. And that is just, again, kind of part of the way that the books are written to be a little bit more slow paced people like Wilkie Collins and Charles Dickens especially were writing um period like serially so their books actually work a little bit more like a tv show than like a movie whereas like The Tenant of Wild Hall was written to be like a single novel and is sort of like a long you know film basically if we're doing equivalents right novel equals film books that were written serially are meant to be read in installments and so that changes the way that they are experienced a little bit and you do just kind of have to give them a little bit of extra time so you know make sure that you're giving the book a fair chance and then give it up if you're really not interested in it another tip i don't know what number one eight or something read with people uh find a friend to read a classic with do a buddy read there's lots of those that happen on instagram you can search um classics classics club you know is a great place to connect with people who want to read classics comments of this video actually might be a good place um so if you are looking for someone to read just like classics with you in like broadly or a specific classic in particular maybe like throw it in the comments and if you um are someone who you know check the comments out and connect with each other start a book club talk to your friends um it can be really fun remember that practice makes perfect the more you read, the more familiar all of the weird things about reading classics will become. Um, every introduction you read, every note that you read uh, becomes a, like another little piece in your knowledge and eventually you'll find yourself needing those extra things less and less. You'll find yourself being more and more comfortable picking up older books cold and just reading them. Uh, even complicated ones like Shakespeare. It took me a long time to be able to read a Shakespeare play and follow what was happening uh, without needing some kind of specific summary. And now I can because I stuck with it and I kept doing it. So just keep doing it. If you find that the first book that you pick up wasn't your favorite, that don't write off all classics. Try something from a different time period. Try something from a different genre. I think about the kinds of books that you like to read from our own time and see if you can find books that are similar to that that are classics that means that you'll you know it'll be a little bit more there are books that are stories that will be more interesting to you don't try to read stuff just because other people say that they're really important or whatever read what's interesting unless you're a high school student in which case read what your teacher assigns to you says the former teacher and just like enjoy yourself i think reading classics is incredibly rude wording it is a window onto another time and into the way that our past operated the more i study all of these works uh now in my phd getting into the history and the culture of reading even just like in general uh has just shown me how much of an impact the past has made on the present and how really important it is for us to understand where we came from and reading classics is a really enjoyable way of, of kind of gaining that understanding. And there's just a lot of really great books out there uh, to read. Some of them have problems and we should definitely have conversations about those books and maybe stop reading them. Every book is flawed. Every book is a product of its own time period. And the books that we read right now that we don't see as problematic might be seen as problematic later. But um, it's worth giving these people from the past a listen because they have a lot to teach us. So um, I hope that was helpful. If you have questions or want me to elaborate on any of this, I definitely jump down in the comments. If you'd like recommendations, also jump down in the comments. I don't know 
everything, but I can certainly try to point you in the right direction. I'd love to help. If you follow me on my Instagram, which is linked in the comments below, I follow a lot of other people who, who focus on the classics. I don't tend to do a ton of like classics buddy reads and stuff just because I don't have a lot of time. And so I tend to kind of mood read my classics. But if you're looking for that, follow me on Instagram, drop me a DM, I can point you to people uh, who are doing those kinds of things and uh, you can start following them. Um, just, you know, get in touch. Let me know how things are. Anyway, that is it for this video. I hope that you found it to be at least a little bit helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.